Hello there and welcome to another portrait painting demonstration. In today's video, we're going to apply the first color pass to our Rembrandt Master Study. And I'm going to keep an image of the original Rembrandt in the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as the painting develops. For the color palette today, we have titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. So we're going to start off with a very simple uh, combination of basic flesh tone. So we're going to be using titanium white and a combination of yellow ochre and cadmium red medium. So I typically start off with these colors for um, my more basic flesh tone mixtures. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, as always, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. So now as we're moving down in the value scale, we're going to be using a little bit of uh, the same colors that we had before, but now we're adding burnt umber and sap green just to get a darker shade of those flesh tones that we had. And we're throwing in a little bit of flake white into the half tones. Uh, so we're trying to mix up a very basic flesh tone in the direction of the flesh tones that we're observing in the Rembrandt painting. I'm bouncing back and forth between the sap green and the uh, alizarin permanent just to kind of get a darker more neutral warm flesh tone. Now the uh, goal of the first color pass is going to be to further develop the drawing of course um, but it's also to start to uh, develop the color as well. So since we're using a more classical approach to painting uh, with this Rembrandt Master Study, we're not going to focus on trying to get the exact color just right. Instead, we're going to build the color, and at the same time, this is also going to help to develop the drawing of the uh, shapes themselves. So that color scale is going to be pretty much the same. So the color combinations that you're going to see me use are going to be pretty much the same. And so one note on flake white, uh, for those of you that are new to these videos, flake white uh, has this property that allows me to use more of it without raising the value too much. And so what that does is uh, the flake white creates a nicer kind of a heavier body to the oil paint so I'm also going to be using uh, liquin as my medium. You can't really see it um, in this video. The liquin is in a little cup on the bottom of this uh, canvas that we're using. So the liquin I'm just going to use to thin out the paint whenever needed. It's just that I know that in this particular instance there was a little bit of a liquin on the brush and the medium is just to help to thin out the paint and kind of create more fluidity in the application of paint. So we're starting off, we're starting off with the warmer flesh tones on the top of the model's forehead. Just a little disclaimer, um, the colors are going to be a little bit uh, cooler in my painting because I think that uh, the photograph of the actual Rembrandt painting, I think that that photograph is a little bit too hot. I don't think that the original Rembrandt was that orangey. Now again, it's a very iconic Rembrandt uh, self-portrait. This self-portrait that um, I'm using for the photo reference, you can find it pretty much anywhere. If you just look up uh, Rembrandt self-portrait, you will probably find that image as maybe one of your first couple uh, links. In any case, we're starting to develop the uh, warmer, colors for the forehead and we're starting off with the forehead just because it's kind of an easier area of form to address first. So now we're going to put in a darker uh, warmer flesh tone here for the side of the glabella. So the idea here is to keep the color changes, to keep the color variations rather uh, quiet. We are going to add a little more pink for the uh, the cheek, uh, the zygomatic area, we're going to add more pink for the, the lips and the nose and all of that. But 
we're going to keep the color changes rather limited. This is again to help to develop the drawing and the same at the same time add a little bit of uh, chroma. So we're using again more yellow ochre and cadmium red here in this uh, lighter region of the valley scale on the palette and we're starting to push even more warmth into this area. We're letting the transparency of the underpainting show. So in general, as I work, uh, as I add more layers of oil paint, so as the number of layers increases, so does the amount of medium that I use. So in this painting, in this layer, there's going to be quite a bit more um, medium being used so uh, the liquid original is the medium that I'm using and that is because I want the transparency uh, to show I want to build onto the underpainting I don't want to paint over it I want to build onto it and try to keep that mentality uh, whenever you're layering oil paintings think about it as a building process not painting over certain areas so Really, all we're doing is just adding a very semi-transparent layer of oil paint onto the lighter shapes. So just like we did yesterday in the underpainting, we're keying the lights to one another. So that is relating the light of the forehead to the light on the, um, the top plane of the nasal bone and working all around, basically. So now we're adding a little bit of warmth onto the uh, bottom of the lower eyelid and now we're going to move on to the side of the uh, the lower eyelid it's going to get a little bit lighter a little bit more pinkish orangey-ish so we're using we're throwing in a little bit more cadmium red medium and alizarin permanent for this little pinker zone of color let's think about just uh, very basic color zones so for the colors uh, we're going to think of the forehead as one zone of color the cheekbone the zygomatic region another zone of color nose we're going to group that with the cheek uh, zygomatic region the next zone is going to be uh, kind of the mandible the bottom of the face so the forehead's going to be in general a little bit more yellowish and you can see it in the Rembrandt the, uh, the original and the uh, zygomatic bone is going to be a little bit more reddish pinkish you can see it on the uh, Rembrandt painting and the uh, the jawbone region the uh, mandible region is going to be a little bit cooler. Again, you can see that on the um, original Rembrandt. So we're going to throw in some more flake white and some of our deeper red colors and try to just push the chroma for that shape a little bit. Later on in the painting, you're going to see that I'm actually going to try to use uh, some palette knife uh, techniques to try to develop more of a, uh, a thicker layer of paint. Now Rembrandt's paintings, Rembrandt was quite a master at uh, surface quality of his paintings. So certain areas are painted very thick with lots of paint. Other areas are painted very silky, soft, kind of uh, liquidy film of paint. So on the face it's a little bit thicker especially around the areas of the forehead and uh, the eyes and the cheekbone so again this is going to be a master study that we're going to keep developing over um, a couple of sittings maybe there's one or two more left after this video before the Rembrandt is uh, completed so for the forehead later on we're going to add a little bit of palette knife so now let's go ahead and put in we're putting in a, a warmer darker tone much darker than we need for the nose and uh, tell you what so the reason we're doing that is because we're going to kind of paint a lighter tone right on top of it so that's going to help us create a gradation of tone a gradation of a warmer tone 
So now we're putting in that warmer tone, and it's a very simple color combination of just flake white, titanium white, and cadmium red medium, and yellow ochre. Those color combinations are going to be a staple for these very basic flesh tones, and keyword very basic flesh tones. And so now we're going to move down to the darker mid-tone region of the palette and we're going to start to add some warmer uh, tones for the ear. So one thing I'm noticing about uh, Rembrandt paintings in particular, even the ones I've seen up close and personal, um, he does kind of push the warmth in the certain areas of the face that um, are usually more reddish, so ears, nose, lips, uh, cheekbone. He does kind of push the warmth a little bit and I've noticed it in some of the, uh, the, the Rembrandts that I've seen in person at the National Gallery in DC and stuff. He's very good at playing the contrast between uh, warmish, warm-ish tones against the cooler, more neutral tones. So if you look at the um, so this little area here, around the bottom of the uh, zygomatic bone, right around here, there's a very distinct uh, color band of warm contrasting a cooler color band. And I think that, uh, I can't be certain of this, but I think that that pinker shade uh, was added uh, later. So for instance, I can kind of see the layering process in the Rembrandt painting by looking at it. And I'm trying to kind of emulate that so again, uh, throughout this entire uh, video, so for the first color pass, again, the colors aren't going to be that bright. They're not going to be that chromatic just yet. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, the next time I work on this painting, I will push those warmer colors uh, the way that Rembrandt has it in, uh, in that picture. But again, not going. I'm going to be kind of cautious of how orangey I make the flesh tones just because I don't really, I don't think that he made them uh, that orangey in person. And I know some of you are saying, well, why not just uh, apply for a copyist program in a museum and then make master copies that way? Um, yeah, I, I can probably do that in the future, yes. But in any case, we're adding a little bit of ultramarine blue. And we're going to use ultramarine blue combined with the burnt umbra that we mixed onto that little puddle of paint and we're going to start to put in the background color. So we're working in large relations. So we're relating the darker value of the background in relation to the lighter areas of the flesh tones. So like I said in uh, yesterday's video with the, uh, the underpainting, with the underpainting it's a little bit safer to work lighter than need be so that you can come back in and create kind of like a stained glass effect with the layering of paint. So that is the uh, very light regions of the underpainting are kind of acting like the sun would uh, if it were shining uh, behind a uh, stained glass window. So that's kind of how we're building up the transparencies. And so now we're just mixing up a darker grayish color for the background. Just using pretty much ultramarine blue and burnt umber to paint that in. And now we're in the middle tone region of the palette and we're going to start to add a little bit of light there for the top plane of the uh, structure for the mouth. A little bit more titanium white. And as you're noticing, the titanium white tends to live around the lighter values on my uh, flesh tones on the palette. And the flake white kind of lives in the middle darker regions. And now we're starting to add a little more of a nuance to this shape here. Like I said yesterday, um, I think that that shape was a little bit too sharp. So now we're just going to add a little more warmth into the uh, concavity of the eye socket. Again, I'm noticing a lot of warmer tones in the Rembrandt. And 
because this is such a popular Rembrandt self-portrait, uh, it's very easy to look up. So if you want to just see a larger photo reference for this Rembrandt, I promise you, just Google Rembrandt self-portrait. This will be one of the first ones that will show up. And there's many, many, many different images of this same painting. And again, you'll notice with the Rembrandt, he does push the warmer colors quite a bit, especially in the um, concavity of the eye socket. It's much darker and it's much warmer now than we had uh, previously established it. That is, it's much darker and we're introducing some warmer elements into it. I'm just going to let that shape carry over to the top of the uh, the side of the glabella, and we're also sharpening that edge as well. Back to the middle tone region of the palette. I'm going to just put in a darker, kind of neutral greenish color for the facial hair, for the mustache. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Just to kind of neutralize and cool off this little darker shape here. So we're kind of pushing a little bit more contrast now between the uh, light shapes and the darker shapes. So we're adding an our first little color shift for the upper lip and I think it's going to have to be a little bit more red so let's throw in a tiny bit more cadmium red medium and the flake white and again the flake white really helps to raise the value but not quite as bright as titanium white and it helps to give a heavier body to the oil paint. And now we're just kind of trying to add more of a uh, refined shape for the dark shape of the uh, upper lip. Now moving across the forms, we're going to put in a little darker shape there for the corner of the side of the mouth. And a little bit of a warm light there for the lower lip. Kind of softening that edge there for the lower lip. Back to the middle tone region of the palette. Again, just trying to soften that edge. Just pushing that shape a little more. A little bit of sap green into the darker middle tone region of the palette now to help to neutralize those. Uh, reds. I'm going to just push this little dark shape a little more for the side of the mouth, also giving more of the uh, expression. Now back to the titanium white. Just a little though to raise the value. And with the uh, more neutral greenish tones warm greenish tones. We're starting to put in some more information for this color band. Remember we're thinking of just three major color bands. So the uh, forehead, the cheekbone, and the mandible region. So again it's going to get a little bit cooler down here. And I think this is a very kind of classical thing. I'm not entirely sure if that's the case but kind of having the colors be a little bit cooler, closer to the um, the mandible and more yellowish warm for the forehead. I've seen it also on a, uh, a bunch of Sargent paintings too. So in the lighter middle tone region of the palette, throwing in a little more yellow ochre. And we're going to take a look at this little light here for the chin. 
throwing in much more light for the chin. So now we're about 20 minutes into uh, the first color pass and we've pretty much covered most of the uh, light shapes for the face. So now we're going to try and build more of a heavy body of oil paint using the palette knife. So with the palette knife we have the flake white, the titanium white, pretty much just combining both of the whites together. Again, the flake white helps to build a heavier body with the yellow ochre. So now we have quite a bit of paint and a very rich color mixed right onto the uh, palette knife. And we're applying the thickness of the paint with the palette knife because the synthetic brushes just can't really hold that much paint. Neither can pretty much any brush and the palette knife just help, really really helps to add much more thickness to the paint but as a consequence uh, this first color pass now is going to take much more time to dry just because we're adding a thicker layer of paint to this one area in particular. So in tomorrow's video we're going to return to the larger painting that we uh, we're working on earlier during the week and we'll probably return to this Rembrandt painting uh, maybe I don't know next Sunday or something. So we used the palette knife to also add that highlight on the forehead that was really hard to get with the brush. So a little bit more of the titanium white and cadmium red medium. Just trying to push the warmth on the nose a little more. A little more of a bright pinkish area there. And with that same color that we've mixed up on the palette knife, we're also going to use that as a highlight for the nose. A little highlight there on the bulb of the nose. And taking a different brush now, we're adding a little bit of uh, liquid. So the uh, liquid original is the medium that we're going to use to thin out the paint. And so we're going to use that now to spread some of the darker tones onto the clothing. And we're also going to use it later on for the uh, hat. So a very similar, similar color combination to what we had for the dark shape of the concavity of the eye socket. Pretty much just a combination of the uh, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of alizarin permanent. We have this kind of darker brownish color. So a little more ultramarine blue just to help to darken that value. And now we're throwing in a little corner there for the side of the collar. And we're also building the, uh, we're also increasing the value scale. Remember yesterday I said in the underpainting that um, starting off with something like burnt umber or raw umber as a color for the underpainting really helps because it compresses the value range and uh, notice how much darker we can go now today with the uh, burnt umber ultramarine blue ivory black combination so now we're going to mix up kind of a very dark uh, subdued red a little bit of sap green just to uh, quiet that the heat of that color down. And we're going to throw in that uh, very warm reflected light. I usually try to stay away from reflected lights, but that's a very strong reflected light on the side of Rembrandt's face, so I thought might as well throw that in there. And again, it's important to use a little bit of sap green just to make sure that that red doesn't get too bright. Now back to the ivory black. A little more painting medium. Starting to sharpen that little edge there for the side of the ear. 
We're using a fan brush there to just to help, just to help eliminate the glare. So now we're going to see just how dark we can push this little uh, boundary, this little accent where the uh, hat meets the side of the, the head. And now we're, again, still moving all around the picture. Now we're trying to put some more of a shape here for the bottom of the mandible, kind of extending that shape a little bit. Just some more sap green just to cool off the heat from that uh, warm reflected light. We're going to go ahead and re-examine the chin. Like I said yesterday, I think the chin was an area that needed a little bit more attention. So uh, we're going to go ahead and relate the angle between the collar of the, the, uh, the shirt or the coat, um, relating that angle with the cast shadow along the side of the, uh, the chin. And we're relating that because it looks almost to be a straight line. The, uh, the angle cutting across the side of the collar in relation to the cast shadow on the side of the chin. So I think that little adjustment that we just made there kind of uh, helped out a little bit with the um, believability of the chin. And notice how these color shapes are still very simple. The portrait painting uh, is still very simple and easy. So again, those of you that have been watching my videos long enough know how to finish my sentence. Keep your shapes simple and easy. And again, those of you that finished my sentence, at least in your head, that is awesome. Anyway, keep your shapes simple and easy for you to understand. So when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. And that's certainly going to be true, especially with the uh, this Rembrandt Master Study. We're trying to keep the shapes extremely simple yet as exacting as we can possibly make them. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, Rembrandt lighting, a little triangle of light there. And we put a very semi-transparent application of paint. Again, just darker, warmer colors. And in the darker middle tone region of the palette, we're going to use a little bit more sap green just to cool off the heat from the uh, cadmium red and alizarin permanent. And that little neutral greenish warm tone is also very useful for uh, the edges directly beneath the lower lip. It's a little bit more cadmium red medium. We're going to punch up the warmth a tiny bit more. And again, back to the sap green. Constantly relating the uh, warmer tones with the cooler tones. Adding a little bit more contrast for the eyebrow there. A little bit more cadmium red medium. Just to throw in a little bit more heat for the cast shadow. And we're moving fairly quickly. There's only about 20 minutes left in this uh, segment of the Rembrandt Master Study. And we've, we're covering very, very quickly. So this way of working is a little bit faster. And faster in comparison to uh, trying to finish, say, one corner of the painting. I can't really know how Rembrandt worked, but part of me doesn't think that Rembrandt worked one segment at a time. But again, I can't really know. So back to the cadmium red medium. In the darker region of the palette, 
we're going to put in a very kind of a, a deep red, but not quite a bright red into the uh, shirt. And what I mean by that is pretty much just cadmium red with a tiny bit of its complementary color, which is the green, sap green. And a little bit of alizarin permanent, just kind of very lightly applying the paint onto the side of the collar. Now, in comparison, uh, the fact that we just threw in that darker, uh, more red-ish color into this painting makes the flesh tones, in comparison, look cooler. Kind of a strange optical effect. You can even see it if you are scrolling along in the video. So if you're scrolling along, the portion of the painting the segment of this video that didn't have that red shape, the flesh tones looked warmer, didn't they? And now that we throw in that red shape, the all of a sudden the flesh tones look cooler. It's kind of an interesting contrast between color. So a little bit of burnt umber into this darker region of the palette. So burnt umber and the ultramarine blue to help give us kind of a neutral, a dark neutral brown. And we did add a little more liquid onto the brush. We're gonna to start to cover this darker shape. And also in, in comparison, now that we're putting this darker value for the clothing, it's also going to make the face look lighter in contrast. A Little bit more burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Just throw in some of these little uh, streaks, streaks of dark value. One right across the side of the collar. A little bit more ultramarine blue for these darker tones. Throwing even some darker tones on the side of the face. And again, those darker values make the lighter values look brighter than they appeared before. A little bit of a dark shape around the corner of the shoulder. And with a little more cadmium red medium, we raised the value of that shape a little bit and made it a little bit warmer. And as we spread the paint around, uh, this little area of the painting is going to have much more medium associated with it, just to help spread the tone. A little bit more ultramarine blue, just to push that dark shape a little more. And we're going to push the darks now. So we're pushing the dark right beneath the back side of the ear and that's also going to help us transition into the darker shapes for the hat a little bit later. So now with a little more of a darker warm tone we are pushing the uh, shape of the ear a little bit softer so we're softening that shape. And so just like I said earlier that dark shape beneath the back of the ear was a nice transition into the darker shapes for that uh, that really awesome looking hat. So if anyone can find a hat that looks like that, I would love to wear it for um, for some of my uh, painting videos. That would be pretty neat. I would love to wear the Rembrandt hat and pretend that I'm like a fraction as... Uh, good of a painter as Rembrandt was. Even if I can obtain the skill level of maybe like one one hundredth of the skill level that Rembrandt had, I'd be happy. And I think that doing these master studies really does help uh, build. It's a really helpful skill building exercise. So that's why I think I'm going to start doing more of these. 
So throwing in that darker shade for the hat really did something for the lighter shapes of the face. Not only did they make the shapes for the face look much lighter, but it also makes the lighter shapes on the face look much cooler. And like I said, I'm going to try and make the flesh tones on the face not as orangey as the original picture, but I will admit that they look a little bit too cold on the uh, in the painting footage. So in the next segment, so the second color pass for the Rembrandt, I think I'm going to make the flesh tones a little bit warmer. But still try to make it not as warm as the uh, photo reference. And now with a little more ultramarine blue and burnt umber, we're starting to push the dark for the uh, the iris. So again, one one thing that really catches the eye is the dark of the iris with the Rembrandt paintings in particular. So now we're pushing that dark. But the trick is not to push it as quite as dark as uh, say ivory black or ultramarine blue. So we want this value to be dark, but maybe one or two steps lighter than the darkest dark. That's the key. Now it's a little bit more cadmium red medium into the middle tone region of the palette. We're going to put a little more of a uh, darker uh, accent beneath the nasal bone and now we're switching back to the palette knife just so we can get a much cleaner mixture of color. So with the titanium white and cadmium red medium yellow ochre we're going to get a very light and um, kind of dark pinkish color. So switching back to the brush we're going to try to use that for the uh, the bright pink of the cheekbone. And like I said earlier, I think that Rembrandt probably added in those warmer colors in uh, later layers or stages of the painting. And now it's a little bit more of a greenish tone. We're starting to put in some of the half tones uh, beneath the lower eyelid. Don't want it to be too green, however, but uh, Rembrandt was kind of the Einstein of pushing the the reds and the warms, so the warms and the cools of the face. He was really the genius in that kind of uh, color mixing. So now we've used a little more sap green just to cool off the middle tone region of the palette. And we're also kind of softening that little uh, form edge beneath the uh, lower eyelid. And we're pushing these values a little bit darker but very subtle. So let's introduce the idea of subtlety within the value range. So. How close can you get a value to another value, yet maintain the differentiation between those values? That's how you obtain subtlety in the flesh tones. Not only in color, but in value as well. And so we're still kind of prioritizing the value. So that is, we're pushing these value changes a little bit darker now, but we're pushing them ever so slightly darker. The closer we can group these values to one another, the more subtlety we can obtain. And we're also kind of pushing the warmth in this little shape of value as well. With a little bit more sap green, we're going to kind of uh, neutralize it a little bit. And we're going to push this little shape of value right around the uh, the mandible a little bit darker first and then we're going to build 
the lighter shapes onto it, just like we did with the bulb of the nose. Now we're starting to put in the lighter tone just to create a very clean gradation of value. And now we're going to soften the edge between the side of the forehead and the corner of the hair. This edge is very soft in the, uh, the Rembrandt painting, so we're going to try to emulate that by softening it with that little intermediate value transition. Very, very soft edge. Now with the darker middle tone greenish area of the palette, we're starting to push these uh, edges very slightly though. So we're adding a little bit more sap green into the cast shadow beneath the chin to try to contrast with that really warm reflected light the warm reflected light on the side of the uh, shadow of the face. And now we're putting in our first little bit of flesh tone here for the neck. I almost forgot to put some light shape onto that. And I'm not going to bother with too much of the, uh, the details for the collar of the shirt. The focus is much more, uh, much more into the, uh, flesh tones of the face. With a little more burnt umber into the darker region of the palette, we're going to try to get a pretty nice dark with the ivory black and the burnt umber and just kind of uh, put in a darker value beneath the bottom of the hair and softening that edge a little bit. And so let's sneak a little bit of warmth with the uh, alizarin permanent. So we're going to sneak a little bit of warmth right underneath of the, uh, the light area of that collar. I'm just putting a little more of a value transition down there. Now I know that that bottom portion of the uh, shirt is not visible in the photo reference and it's really not that important to focus on the uh, clothing for this painting, it's much more important to focus on the face. That's why you don't really see the bottom of the uh, the bottom of Rembrandt's uh, collar. It's not really as important. So now we're in a more close-up view of the painting. So now we're going to try to push some more of the uh, more subtle value transitions. We only have about um, about seven minutes left in this segment of the Rembrandt Master Study. So again, with the last seven or eight minutes, we're really going to try to focus on edge quality yet again, just like we did with the um, underpainting and again just just know that this is a building process so the next layer will build onto this layer and that's a little bit easier to sharpen the edges as you go so it's okay to keep some of these edges even still at this point a little bit softer and then sharpening them as you go so in my older painting videos, I didn't really talk too much about edge quality. So I'm going to try to take the opportunity in, this, uh, in these last few minutes of this video to really talk about the edges yet again. So I'm sharpening the edge around the uh, areas of focus, the edges around the areas of focus. And the areas of focus are the eyes, the nose, the collar. So the collar is going to be sharp, corner of the eyes sharp, and the bulb of the nose, the side of the bulb of the nose, so the wing of the nose will be sharper. The form edges will be in general softer with the exception of these main planes. I will admit the 
the edges are getting a little too soft around this little area of the uh, the forehead so in the next sitting uh, we're definitely going to address some of those edges so we're softening and again perhaps over softening but I think it's a little bit safer to go softer around the areas especially around the mask of the face so softening the shape there for the eyebrow it's also going to help us get a little more of the uh, expression in a little bit darker there so we keep pushing the contrast between that eyebrow so again Rembrandt I think is one of was one of the best and is one of the best when it comes to portraiture and really trying to get the psychology of the human condition in his paintings. I feel like the more I study Rembrandt, the more I observe Rembrandt's paintings, the, the stronger I become in my own painting. So in the darker middle tone region of the palette, we're going to go ahead and just soften this little edge here. So at this point we're really just softening. And with only four minutes away uh, for the ending of this video, really just trying to manage the edge quality. So whenever you're working uh, from life or working from photo reference, I really do recommend taking your time, especially with portrait. I know I'm kind of guilty of this in my uh, older paintings of just trying to complete a painting or a portrait in one day or in one sitting. And it was always a lot of fun kind of trying to chase down the, the moment. Um, but now as I've painted so many more portraits, uh, I really do see the importance in knowing what you're looking for with each individual layer. So again, with the first color pass, what we really wanted was to develop the drawing even further and to add very simple and subtle hue variation, simple and subtle color variation. And then the next color pass, we will be able to add even more subtlety onto the face and even more richer color combinations. So with a little more lizer and permanent, let's go ahead and just put in a little contrast of red around the corner of the ear. And we're also sharpening that edge. But I think that edge should be sharper, so we're going to soften it with the uh, kind of like an intermediate value. So now I believe that the edges are much more elaborate and much more developed than they were yesterday in the underpainting. And adding on top of that, we have introduced the uh, very simple basic color combinations. And in the next uh, in the next sitting on this painting, we will be able to further delineate the uh, shifts in color and we will be able to add some more solid and much more uh, well-defined uh, planes and edges between the planes on the forms of the face and in particular the forehead. So we'll be able to get into some more of those uh, some more of those forms. So now we have just a minute left so just going to go ahead and add a little more of a darker shape there on the corner of the ear. So this is going to leave us in a really good position to uh, look at this painting afresh possibly in another week or so. So in tomorrow's video we're going to return to that larger painting that we've been working on earlier during the week.
And also let me know if you appreciate this style of video. This is my older style of uh, creating these portrait painting videos. So again, I film myself painting and then I do the narration afterwards while looking at the footage, still trying to maintain everything in real time. So again, I think I just, I work much faster when I, uh, when I'm not painting and talking at the same time. But I honestly do enjoy painting and talking at the same time. So uh, when we return to the larger painting, it will probably be uh, me looking at the camera, talking to you, painting, guiding you through it. But for these master copies, I think that uh, it would be better for me to create them in this style. So that being said, I really hope that this video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork and I'll be back again tomorrow.